feet, 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 Two more. Two more. Day two of East-West Bowl week got off to a quick start at TD Stadium this morning as players continued to fine-tune their skills with coaches from the college and professional ranks. Linemen worked on their footwork and agility in the trenches, quarterbacks studied the playbook and practiced throwing from the pocket, while receivers and defensive backs ran one-on-ones. Players know that even though the game will garner the most attention, how they perform in practice will weigh heavy in the minds of CFL scouts. The morning was focused on drills, while the afternoon consisted mostly of installing new plays and working on special teams. Given that the offense has so little time to learn a playbook and master their game plan, running backs will need to step up and create something out of nothing when a ground game play goes wrong. One of the players to watch in this scenario is Dylan Campbell of Laurier, who's soaking in as many lessons and tips as he can throughout the week. They're not trying to change our technique or anything since we're only here for a week, but all the helpful tips when it comes to the, um, the play calling and how to run the right play, run the right, the right aiming point and everything. Practicing with a bunch of guys that I've never met before, but like a bunch of talented guys. And it's a great team, great atmosphere to be out here and learning from all these coaches from CIS. Adrenaline was pumping and tension was high during inside run drills, where players from both sides of the ball made big hits and at times talked trash. But to second team All-Canadian Ron O'Mara, it's all part of the fun. There's no personal... Uh malice towards anyone there I mean for me I just love to play football I mean it gets heated I guess for some, sometimes he got mad but I mean he knew at the end of the day that you know it's just football so I mean it was just heat of the moment pretty much. One of the most enthusiastic people on the field today was Hamilton Tiger Cats defensive line coach Dennis McPhee who also has a long coaching history in the OUA. Having worked with players at both levels he says he can't help but be excited for what lies ahead for many of these prospects. All these guys are in the prime of their lives, right? You know, they're, they're the biggest and strongest they're ever going to be, the same at the CFL level. So you really you get really excited for them to be successful and you try and help them the best you can. Jim Barker, the general manager of the Toronto Argonauts, paid a visit to the afternoon practice. Although there are certain players that he and other scouts may be more familiar with, he says that the East-West Bowl is a chance for every single player to be evaluated thoroughly. For this game, we look at everybody. We don't. Uh, this, we start our lists for next year off this game, and then it'll grow from there. As uh, Chris Rossetti's here, and uh, our whole sc scouting staff is here, and they'll talk to coaches and they'll try to get coaches' input on who they like for next year and who they think their leaders are going to be and. Uh, that type of thing. So we'll get a lot of names that way and it's just it's just doing the you know it's called the doing the dirty work. Shortly after the East West players called it a day, athletes from across North America took the field for the East West Free Agent Combine, where undrafted and unsigned players eligible to attend CFL camps this season hope to impress scouts. Indeed, it was a busy day at TD Stadium. Today's practices were noticeably more intense than the first one on Tuesday, and with only three days left to go before Saturday's game, the pace will only pick up from here. But the talent on display has been immense, and according to Dennis McPhee, this draft class is one of the best the CFL has seen in 20 years. For the CIS, I'm Gareth Bush.